My name is Vincent Everts, Trend Watcher. June 7th at the Blockchain Innovation Conference, we have Atrace presenting at the ICO track, and CEO Erwin Waring is here. We're going to talk about what the uh, what Atrace is all about. I met him at a previous conference, and uh, I already interviewed him. That was at Changes. And uh, okay, Erwin, you just came from London to basically get some uh, people enthusiastic for the investment. First, let's start about what is Atrace. Yes, hello, and uh, thank you for having us, uh, in, uh, Vincent. Yes, uh, so a uh, affiliate marketing platform. So we are an entirely custom-made blockchain capable of registering and uh, auditing any advertisement click on chain mm -hmm. in affiliate marketing. And the advantages of those are that uh, you have full uh, transparency. You can attribute any click to the rightful owner, so to say. Yeah. So there's full trust, and uh, you can take with all the uh, all the commissions as well. Yes, yeah, that's the, main, the that's the, that's the promise. Okay, and, and affiliate marketing is a field full of fraud. Nobody really knows what's going on. Nobody knows what's what's real. And of course, yes. if you then want to be in the middle and be the honest broker and with low fees, and honestly, we of course look at hey, garbage in, garbage out. How how are you setting up this system that? If I do an advertisement, it's a real human being, it's a real click. You know, this is all about um, the affiliates. Is, is it clickable or is it views? What, what part of the business are you in? So, so uh, yeah, that's a good question. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, just to, 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 to present the full picture here. So, online advertisement is a very large market, 260 billion US dollar a year. Mm -hmm. Now, you, it consists of a couple of aspects. So, you have display advertisement, which is pay-per-view. You have... Search engine advertisement, so to say, which is pay per click, and you have affiliate marketing, which is pay per achievement, which is arguably uh, the most healthy way of online advertising. Yeah. I only pay when I have a sale. Yeah. Yeah. So, how it works is, for example, you have a price comparison website like compareinsurances.com, uh, and a visitor clicks on an advertisement on compareinsurances.com and is steered towards the insurance uh, company. Yeah. Uh, the sale has been closed, and the insurance company pays a commission to the compareinsurance.com website. Very healthy system, but there's a middleman involved, indeed, that tracks all the clicks from the compareinsurance website. Mm -hmm. And the middleman also arranges all the payments from the insurance company to the website. Yep. And this is where the problem arises, because nobody trusts the middleman. So uh, nobody trusts the numbers. And I've had... Uh, uh, personal experience with that and half of our founders have had personal experience with that. Yep. This is the problem. And to solve this, uh, you, you simply have to click, uh, 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 basically uh, track every individual click and uh, put this as a small contract on a blockchain. Because in that case, you cannot you know, mess with the numbers anymore. And that's the basic... And decentralization and tracking and tracing of advertising on your own blockchain, right? Okay, so Exactly. That's Yes, that is the uh, that is the basic idea, and yes. um, and, and we um, well okay we can we can look at your white paper. You're doing your ICO. What what phase is your ICO, and what's the role of the token? So uh, uh, the ICO. So we've we've uh, we've closed the private sale, which is uh, oversubscribed double. So that was a very good sign, and also predominantly driven by the end users, so the merchants and the publishers. So that's a very good sign. That means how much that did you raise in that private sales? Excuse me? How much did you say I uh, raised in the private one? Uh, 1.1 million. Okay. Uh, so uh, so that's obviously a very, very good sign that we're on to something. Uh, the pre-ICO will start on the 21st of June. The ICO will start on the 12th of July. Uh, the, the, the token uh, is, is it's very simple. So the token is needed for the publishers, so for the end users. For the publishers, to, they have to pay a very small fee for every individual click to be registered on the blockchain. All that income or, or a trace will go to the witnesses or the nodes who are processing the blockchain. And then uh, the merchants or, let's say, the insurance companies need the token uh, every time they pay a commission to a publisher. Uh, and this is a very small fee, so 0.5%. And of that very small fee, 80% will be burned and 20% will go to the trace network maintenance service. We've done all the maths and everything. And, and if, you, if you apply... So... Um I saw in the uh, in the previous conference that there is already you have your own blockchain, right? Is it uh, it's based yes. on which on which blockchain is it based? Um, um, which one did you start with? So blockchain is uh, fully built from scratch. Uh, we did not find any existing blockchain that could uh, 
that could accommodate uh, the ideas we had. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very it's uh, it's very important to mention we're successful because all of them are running on Ethereum, which is obviously very easy to do. Mm -hmm. uh, you just make one little small contract and it's done. But uh, they cannot track and trace every individual click on chain because yeah. in order to do that, you will have to process about between 1,000 to 6,000 contracts a second. Yeah. And that's uh, and that's uh, that's you can't you can't afford doing that on Ethereum. It will cost you millions a month. So uh, as a result, all our competition is focusing on just taking out uh, most of the commissions or connecting the publishers and merchants directly. Yeah. But that's not the main problem with affiliate marketing. The main problem with affiliate marketing is the trust and tracking issues. Which we are the only party so far that can solve this. Okay, you have to prove that. We'll see. Yeah. Okay, then uh, let's talk here. about. But you have your own blockchain, and it does uh, thousands of transactions a second, and you have you have something up and running, and that. So we're going to talk about that later. We're, talk about the team. You have a um, you have a, quite a large team. Uh, what I uh, what I saw. I mean, your. Uh, let's start with you. You have started a number of companies uh, yourself, right? I saw you on Crunchbase that you raised uh, that you raised some money for your uh, own company. What uh, what what is that company which uh, which you're currently working with? Uh, the company uh, the, my my most recent startup is called Link Bundle, which is a company which is uh, which is focused around uh, performance measurement in the online space for global operating. Uh, institutions. Uh, we are predominantly focused on retail banking at the moment. So that will be, for example, if I have Santander Bank, which is a large client. Yeah. Uh, Santander spends millions a year on online advertisement and online visibility. And then at some point, the CEO is going to ask the question, how am I doing? We are the party that can uh, give an answer to the question and put that type of reporting in a real-time environment. Okay. So that's, that's what I've been doing before. You have two other people from the uh, two other people from the team which you think is interesting. There's a lot of them. Uh, it's, I mean, uh, there, I, I believe the team is very strong. So you have Leonard Swart, which uh, just as me also lived for a long time in London and also worked for Morgan Stanley, as, as I have as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the brothers Janssen, who set up Derrybit, which is a, a rather impressive uh, derivatives planning, uh, platform, uh, focused on, of course, the, the cryptocurrencies. Yep. Uh, we have mm -hmm. someone from eBay. We have Professor Sam Gark, which is a thought leader in corporate governance. How to scoop in the rather old-fashioned merchants like the old retail banks. And, he's an and who's working yeah. for you? And who's an advisor? Uh, so, uh, well, if, if it says advisor, uh, then uh, they're obviously uh, okay. working only for uh, for a couple of days a week for us. Okay, but that Philip Language is he a full time? Uh, is he full time uh, with the team? No, no, no. Okay, no, he's not full time with the team. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so how many people? How many? Pe who are the people which are really working full time uh, on this uh, to put this venture up and running? How many people do you have? Uh, well, we have five. Uh, so we have five working full time right now, and we have a back. Uh, we have a, a team of programmers, of course, which is I think at the moment between nine and eleven, which are programming. Okay. Good. All righty. Um, this whole ICO business, right, is, is quite yeah. something. I mean, you've raised money the traditional way. Investors are now going around the world yeah. trying to raise money uh, the ICO way. Uh, I see that you have a company called Amazix who's advising you and you have a, uh, a PR company. How, how, tell me about the mechanics, how to do this ICO. What do you need to do? I mean, there's a bunch of ICOs. You see yeah. all these ICOs around you. What is, what is your impression of this space? Uh, well, I... I I don't want to be too blunt, but we're Dutch, so we can be uh, we can be a bit more blunt than let's say what is considered best practice. I, I believe that uh, let's say 80% of the ICOs globally is uh, doesn't have a convincing user case. If they have a convincing user case, then 80% of those uh, can solve their use case without using blockchain. So if they have the convincing uh, delivered, then the question is when are you going to show real economical traction? Now, if you put on Apply all those filters and all the ICOs you currently see. In my view, probably three percent will be will be uh, will be left. But that's okay. my honest opinion. And who am I to say that? Okay. Uh, well, on June the seventh, you're going to pitch, and we'll see what the jury and what the audience thinks about it. So we'll see you in Utrecht at the Blockchain Innovation Conference next week, exactly June the seventh in uh, in Utrecht. Thanks very much for coming. Thank you so much uh, for for having us. Thank you.